My name is Vignesh. I'm heading up the business development efforts for Billigence. And on this webinar, we'll be also seeing Colin Chang, who works with me, and uh, we're part of the Billigence family. Billigence Asia is actually part of the Billigence group of companies covering Australia, Asia, Europe, and the US. Our headquarters is located in Sydney, and we have a center of excellence in Prague, which is in the Czech Republic. So what you'll see is uh, we're actually quite spread out across the globe. And despite being spread out across the various offices, we're actually still quite agile. And we share our knowledge and expertise with customers across the globe. Of course, for Colin and, and myself, uh, we're based out of the, the, the Singapore office and we're supported very often by the folks out of the Prague office as well as our Sydney office. What I'd like to do now is to share a little bit about what we have always delivered to our clients. Diligence provides expert BI consultancy worldwide, as well as partnering with world-class product companies like Tableau, Alteryx, and Calibra to provide the best fit solution and services for our customers. All of this addresses the simple need for an expert to assist the digital transformation journey. This journey through the various stages of analytics maturity run through the following four stages. As you can see, stage one is basically consolidating what you have and getting a better sense of what you can do right now and what else you may need to do more. This is usually the hardest part of the data journey because it will require organizations to evolve how they work and what they start to keep track of. Stage two, which is shown here as data visualization, is usually using, using market leading tools like Tableau to get better insights on the information your organization has currently. The days of pie graphs and bar charts are long gone. Stage three, this is, a, this is a little more advanced and usually involves running statistical and analytical models to help with decision making. This is an area where a lot of organizations may be investing in BI tools. And uh, this is an, a, an area I think a lot of uh, digital transformations usually bring a lot of organizations towards. But stage four is where many of us have to head towards because it's knowing that the data you have is owned and maintained by the correct people, as well as ensuring that the data used for Tableau dashboards, annual reports, stakeholder summaries are trustworthy. This is a very key destination for many organizations, and we'll share just a little bit more in a while. Now, a list of some of the folks we work with. In the Singapore context, I'd like to focus on the finance space. We've got DBS, we've got Standard Chartered, and also we have a BMW, if you look in the, under, under Automobile on the left-hand side. And uh, most recently, on the right-hand side, under Education, we'd actually won a large tender opportunity with Nian Polytechnic. This was an engagement which started about two years ago. It started small, of course, and slowly we grew the relationship. We understood what was required, and uh, we recently had provided some Alteryx server and designer licenses. The end result is the engagement with Nian Polytechnic is enabling upskilling their folks to use these tools better and also continuing to improve and build on the use cases that they are solving. Globally, we work with Commonwealth Bank of Australia, University of Glasgow, Shell, Vodafone, and Mondelez, amongst many others that you're seeing in this infographic over here. A useful fact is that we are responsible for the largest Tableau deployment in Asia. This is with the Woolworth chain of supermarkets and grocery stores, which accounts for 80% of the Australian market. Over 1,000 supermarket branches, over 100,000 employees, with a revenue of close to $40 billion in 2019. Now, um, it's it's good to just talk about all this, but it always helps to reference stories. So this is one I wanted to share with you. Um, the case study we have is for some work that we just done. We have a client, an established Singapore-based investment company. They had a situation where there was no centralized reporting mechanism for their internal stakeholders. They had limited access to the updated status of, of, of the data that they needed for, to, to share for decision making and for portfolio building. And with such critical work, it was always needed on a as soon as possible status. So we were able to help them by, help, by helping to build a single source of truth for all the users to access the latest status updates, which also gave a tailor-made view for those with additional roles and responsibilities. One of the most visible improvements was a reduced, was a significant reduction of manual group-wide update emails. Now, this automatically meant those who needed to check on the status would be able to go on the on the tableau dashboard and check on it immediately and automatically this also saved on infrastructure resources so there were a lot of spillover effects as well now i'd like to introduce colin chang he is our principal consultant works alongside me in singapore he will take us through to the next part of this webinar covering tableau's 2020 updates 
where we will cover the most important recently released Tableau features used hands-on. Hi everyone, my name is Colin from Diligence Asia. Firstly, I want to thank you for taking your time to join this webinar today. There are a lot of familiar names on the attendees list. Um, thank you for showing your support and I hope you have been well. For those who I may have not met yet, um, welcome to the webinar. We have prepared an exciting agenda for you today and I'm going to share my screen now. We've prepared an exciting agenda for you today where I'll firstly talk about how with Tableau, we can help you lead through change with data. We'll then go through a features walkthrough of spatial analysis, metrics, as well as viz animations. We'll finish with a dashboard showcase followed by questions and further resources that you can use beyond this webinar. So let's get started. As Vignesh has mentioned, at Diligence, we transform organizations into self-service data-driven businesses. We partner with leading technology companies like Tableau to advance our clients' analytics journey. Tableau's mission is to help people see and understand data. It's a simple yet powerful statement, which is more relevant than ever in times like this. With the unprecedented global pandemic that we are facing currently, it is now more important than ever to have the resources to answer critical questions. This includes having access to timely, detailed and trustworthy information to think quickly and act fast. Because in crisis, we turn to data. When the coronavirus outbreak started, the first thing we all did was turn to data. I'm sure everyone is familiar with this image of flattening the curve. That is a visualization. And that is how the world has come to understand the actual problem we face with this pandemic and inspire the social distancing actions all over the world. This visualization has come to symbolize not only the pandemic, but the rallying call to action. Data help us see and understand the situation and what the actions we need to take, and then understand if our actions have made an impact. Because crisis triggers serious economic consequences. It's a public health crisis leading to an economic crisis. And for businesses, many of us have been forced to work from home or shut down completely, while others are trying to ramp up to meet new and unexpected demands. Most importantly though, together we'll get through this crisis. Now, while we know everyone has unique challenges, we've discovered that organizations move through three stages of responses to the crisis. The first being stabilizing your company. The second being reopening your workplace. And thirdly, growing your business. Companies are going through three phases. These three phases at different rates. Sometimes you even have different teams or departments at different stages. Underpinning this has been rapid digitization programs or for those organizations who have already made investments in the past, it was time to reap the benefits as remote working kicks in and employees can productively work from home while benefiting from timely, detailed and trustworthy information. Because at the heart of every digital transformation is a data transformation. Everything that is digital generates data and all that data is nothing if we don't make it actionable, if we don't analyze it and use it to provide better services, better engagements, or better products to customers. We at Billigence have helped a number of organizations with the data transformation journey, so please do reach out to us if you think we can be of assistance. Now, specifically on the coronavirus situation, Tableau has worked to develop a free data hub, which allows you to keep track of the pandemic, see and understand the impact of the virus, and jumpstart your own analysis and learn how to work with coronavirus data sets. For those of you who are new to Tableau or who are unfamiliar with the software, the Data Hub is a great place to start to see how members of the Tableau community have created industry-specific workbooks and solutions on the topic of COVID-19. And so as you see on the screen here, this coronavirus daily global tracker is updated every day by Tableau. And if you go through the website yourself, you can find the resources or data sources in this case that you can connect to via your own Tableau desktop instance or license. And through that way, you can get up-to-date data that is validated by communities all around the world. Now, onto the Tableau features. So this session will cover three of the main features with the 2020.1 and 2020.2 release. But firstly, let's do a quick recap on the most recent updates. In late 2019, Tableau had made many changes to Tableau Server with add-on offerings like the Tableau Catalog and Server Management add-on. 
They have also revamped the experience on Tableau server and online with view recommendations as a part of 2019.4. Now, earlier this year, Tableau began focusing on providing exciting ways to add powerful interactivity to your data. These were much requested features like dynamic parameters, where you no longer have to republish your workbook for parameter values to be updated, and also viz animations and buffer calculations, which we'll cover today. Finally, just a couple months ago, Tableau also introduced metrics, which I think is a significant enhancement for business users who need data on the go. We'll also go through this in our demo session today. For more information on the updates from Tableau, we have provided a link down below where you can see all of the product updates that has occurred from the day which Tableau releases software until most recently, May 2019. So 2020, Tableau provides quarterly updates and they're a great way to stay up to date with the latest and greatest from Tableau themselves. Now, we will be providing demo content for all users on Tableau desktop whether you're a beginner looking for out of the box features or an advanced user looking for inspiration for your next visualization. This demo will cover many different use cases as well as practical applications that you can do right after the session. We'll focus on exciting ways to add powerful interactivity to your data, either via data storytelling or via dashboards themselves. We'll use motion to show changes and tell better data stories, We'll simplify the analysis of spatial data and distance calculations, both of which were quite difficult to do prior to the Tableau update. And finally, create a view of key data points optimized for mobile via the metric feature. A key thing to note is that all of these three demos we'll be providing today were much anticipated updates provided by the communities themselves on Tableau community. And Tableau had featured all of these in the Tableau conference late last year. With these features fin finally implemented and released to the public, I think you will find some great content for you to use in your everyday Tableau development work. So the first feature we'll be going through is Viz Animations, a feature introduced in 2020.1. Now, as Tableau developers, we all know that data storytelling can be challenging and changes in data are especially difficult to communicate to business users who may be unfamiliar with your data set. Let me show you how a typical data story might resemble without animations. So before animations, different views of the same data will instantly change within ta Tableau Desktop. It's very hard to follow. And it's especially challenging for users to follow along with the various changes in view. With this animations, however, it's easy to show what has changed and what has stayed the same as you go through the logical steps in your data story. So let me jump into my Tableau workbook right now. The first one being animations. Now, when it comes to analyzing time series data, the first thing we do as Tableau developers is often drag the year of the order date or whatever date field you have in your data set to look at the sum of the time, the sum of the measure per year. And then what we do is maybe look at the monthly breakdown for every single year. As I go through each of these dashboards, for you as the audience, it's very hard to follow. But let me turn on these animations and show you how easily it is to both demonstrate the logical steps in your analysis, as well as giving a visual aid to the audience themselves. So let's go into format. And now let's turn on animations by simply clicking the format drop-down menu, going to animations and switching on the workbook, workbook default to be on. Let's set the duration as one second for now. So here, by using parameters, we can easily change the granularity of the sum of sales from year to month. And let me just play for you one more time. So we go from individual sales for every year summed into breakdown for every month. And as an analyst, and as you will communicate to your audience, we'll see individual peaks along certain time. And so let's go into the next dashboard as a part of our data storytelling. So we go from the summation at a year level to breaking it down by individual month with each of the years color coded. So one more time, from year to month with each of the year color coded. And straight away, we're able to see that in the month of November, September, as well as March, there are significant peaks. So why don't we sum that all up and see what it looks like. 
in this dashboard here. We can go from the individual months colored by the different years to having a combined line graph with every single month added up through the year 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. And this is the trend. We see that there is definitely seasonality in the sum of sales for our organization. And we can highlight the peaks in March, September, and November for every single year. Now, animations don't just apply to changing data through granularity of time. It also applies to sorting and filtering, as we'll see in the next demo. So here's a demo where we have a tree map categorized by the different categories. So blue being furniture, orange being office supplies, and red being technology. And so as I go through the different filters on category, through animations, you see each individual subcategory within a category fill the space of the tree map itself and then shrink to represent the component or contribution of each subcategory and the associated category into the whole breakdown itself. Now, secondly, animations on top of working for filters and parameters also work on sorts. So here we've created a parameter action where by clicking profit, all of the categories, sorry, all of the subcategories will sort from the most profit to the least profit. And we can do the same thing with quantity and sales. And as you notice, every time we sort, each of these subcategories will transition in the chart itself. So if I was looking at the highest profit, we see that copy is at, is at the very top. But if we sort by quantity, you see that bar representing the quantity of copiers sold goes down to the very bottom. And this really eases the ability for your users to follow through with your data storytelling. Now, on top of filters and also sorts, animations also apply to actions. So let's go into the technology category here. By selecting all of them, we see the bottom chart populate and animate to show the phone, accessory, machines, and copy a subcategory within the technology category itself. So let's sort by profit. And again, you see copiers jumping to the top. When we sort by sales, copiers go down to the bottom. And this is where the insights are really uncovered by the audience. By using action filters, what we can see is while copiers have the highest profit across all of the technology categories, it doesn't have much quantity and it doesn't have much sales when ranked against the others. And so a potential focus for our organization when it comes to selling different products, maybe to focus on copiers because they represent the highest profit for all of our categories. Now, conversely, Actions can also work in reverse. When we expand out from technology here, back to all of the categories and subcategories, you see individual subcategories repopulate with this visualization. So for a lot of our presentations when it comes to data, there's often a lot of questions asked by the different business users or other stakeholders. And here again with animations, you can really highlight specific answers to the questions and take your users through the data analysis, analysis journey that you might do as a Tableau developer. Now, the next demo we have is another useful application of animations. And it's on scatter charts where we can see the changing relationship between the X axis and the Y axis. So let's switch this back to X axis being on sales and profit being on the Y axis. Here we plotted each state's sales and profit on a scatter chart and through animations, we can observe the changing relationship between sales and profit for every state. Now notice as I go through the different years of the order date, the axis will change. So originally from 2016, we go from zero to 14,000 to zero to 20,000. With this example, by having a flexible axis, what you could do is observe the relationship change of each state when we're looking at sales and profit. 
Now, at the same time, we can also fix the axis. So let's fix it to be 32,000, and let's fix this to be 158,000. And so now what you can do is look at how are each of the individual states moving across this sales to profit relationship. And it can be really interesting when you're breaking down products by types to understand the different intricacies of the product on the market or looking at specific departments or looking at specific regions. As you can see here, in a lot of analysis for modeling with linear regression, with this feature within Tableau, you can easily model how the relationship is changing across time, across different variables. Now, with animations, we can also pair it with pages, which is a shelf within Tableau itself. So here, we're dragging the order date by year into the pages, and what we can create is a play button onto our visualization. So here we have a similar setup, setup where we have sales on the x-axis and profit on the y-axis. By clicking on the play button, we can see all of the states move along this plot and the history of where the state was in previous years as symbolized by this trace available here. And by looping through each of the years individually through the slider, so for 2017 to 2018, we can observe how California has increased their sales from roughly 90,000 and profit to about 15,000 to now 20,000 for profit and 131,000 for sales. And similarly for 2019, this can be very powerful as you're giving a presentation to your stakeholders and to your users who again, may not be familiar with the data set and the analysis behind the data set. We can even do this for categories. So instead, let's drag categories into the pages shelf itself. Here we'll be looping through the sales and profit relationship between each of the categories. And so I can click through one by one and really go into the analysis as I present to my stakeholders or play it as an animation and have the traces shown. Hopefully through this demo, we have shown that animations paired with pages can be very powerful and very useful for Tableau developers and Tableau users like yourselves on a call to present to non-technical users. Often as developers, we're asked to create very interactive or eye-catching visualization that our users may have seen in the media or through other presentations. One particular example I wanted to showcase today is the changing rank table. You might have seen this in relation to the growth of GDP or potentially about the coronavirus cases across the world as time has progressed. Now with Tableau, you can easily create the same effect. Here at the top, I have the cumulative sales by subcategory and a ranking table of monthly sales for each of the subcategories. By placing the date in the pages and using animations in both a table calculation for the top chart for cumulative sales and rankings on the bottom chart, we can create this effect within Tableau. So what we see here is at the end of 2019, phones had the highest running sum of sales for the entire year. And at the bottom, as we traverse through each page, we see the top ranking subcategory for that individual month. So if we go back to February, for example, it was chairs at the top followed by appliances with the values of 3,500 each. And in March, it was overtaken by copiers to be 21,000. And this practical application could be how your sales have accumulated throughout the years or potentially how each of the regions are doing. And again, as I mentioned previously, you might have seen this for economic growth on television or documentaries, as well as reporting of coronavirus as the pandemic has hit over 2 million cases worldwide. So let's head back 
to the PowerPoint presentation. So these animations, in summary, really help and really help yourself as well as your users to see and understand changing data. It's easy to track the logical steps behind a data's evolution and tell powerful data stories. Data points can be tracked visually through the transition, lessening the cognitive burden on users. And as you publish a dashboard onto the server, your users, as they interact with the dashboard through filters or through actions, can see the animations themselves. And really, this enhances the experience of your users on Tableau server or Tableau online. And with this, you might be able to drive more adoption and more usage of the dashboards themselves. Now, as you would have seen through the demo, using these animations is quite easy. All you have to do is click the format and enable animations by clicking the button there. And you set the workbook, de workbook default to be on. You can change the duration of the transition from very fast to very slow, and also work with the style of animation, which I'll go through in the next slide. Now, animations can be applied for the workbook as a whole, or you can create specific experiences on individual sheets, where each sheet can have a different duration or a different style of animation. Now, when it comes to the style of the animation, we have simultaneous versus sequential. So when you look at the demo, all of the animations were played using the simultaneous style. For sequential style, it takes more time, but allows more complex changes to be shown by presenting each of the transitions step by step. So firstly, we have the exit movement, where the marks that are filtered out or omitted from the view are being taken away. Then we have move, which is relating to the change of value or the change in the mark or the bar or the data point on the scatter chart itself. The sort then comes in and, and finally, any new marks will enter up the view, as you will see from this GIF below. Let me just play that back. And so again, if we go into my demo here, let's use this one as an example, format, animations, let's now change it from one second to be two seconds. And with this, as we select on office supplies, everything will be a lot slower. And so when you're presenting complex data or to a large audience, you can really slow down the duration to add in more description, assisting the people with understanding the logical steps you've taken in your analysis or within the data itself. As a recommendation, um, the maximum duration you can set on Tableau right now is 10 seconds, which is far more than enough to go through a long winded description of what is happening onto your data set. Um, as a rule of thumb, typically when you're presenting data, it's recommended to do one second because the longer the duration, more people will lose focus and this may lead to further confusion as opposed to assisting with your data storytelling. So that concludes our demo on these animations. I hope it was interesting and useful for you. In summary, these animations are very powerful for conveying movement or changes in data. And all you have to do is use the format drop down menu. And this automatically works for bars, it works for scatter charts, as well as shapes, densities, circles, squares, areas, field maps, Gantt charts, and mark labels. Now, as a Tableau challenge, try pairing these animations with parameter actions like I showed you for the sorting demo. It can lead to some powerful visualizations and experiences for your Tableau consumers. And quick tip, do test your animations before you publish them to a wider audience. And don't try to animate something overly complex. Think about the use case always and whether the dashboard is a standalone dashboard or a live presentation. So you would have seen from the demo itself, with animations, you can really tailor the user experience by allowing them to select from one worksheet, then navigate to the next worksheet, followed by the third worksheet. Or if you're giving a presentation itself, then you can potentially just use these animations to try and illustrate some of the points 
that you're trying to convey to your audience. As for resources, Tableau is always good with this. There is a Tableau help webpage on how you can format animations and what each of the individual options entails. And there's also a Tableau blog on creating data that moves you with Viz animations. So do check those out if you want more resources on Viz animations. Now, the second feature I'm going to demo today is spatial analytics. With the 2020.1 update, understanding proximity and distance in Tableau is easier than ever. Previously, you may have needed a whole bunch of different tools or very complex calculations involving sines and cosines to calculate the distance between points within a map on Tableau. Now we only need four parameters, and those being latitude, longitude, distance, and unit of measure, and we can perform the spatial analysis all within Tableau without the need of additional tools or data points. So here are the functions available when it comes to spatial analysis, and I thought to provide you with the syntax and the definition as well before we jump into demo. So from 2019.2, we have make point, which converts a latitude and longitude into a spatial object within Tableau. With the make point, which gives you a geometry object, you can then create, you can then use the make line function where we can connect two ge geometry or spatial objects within Tableau together. And then with 2019.3, Tableau releases the distance function, which again, using two spatial objects, geometry one and two, and specifying a unit, whether it's meters, kilometers, miles, or feet, Tableau will automatically return the distance measurement between the two. And finally, with 2020.1, with the buffer function, what you can do is using a spatial point, specify a distance and a unit, and it will return a circular shape with a radius determined by the distance and unit values defined. So let's jump in into the demo. So here we have this as the normal data. We have the latitude, the longitude, the hospital name, and also a identifier for each of the hospitals. What I did was I extracted all of the hospitals and clinics available in Singapore and then plotted them on a map by simply dragging the longitude and latitude of each row within my data set onto the map itself. Now, firstly, with the make point function, what I did is using the function of make point, I entered the latitude and longitude of the diligence office. And as you can see here, this is where we're situated at 410 North Bridge Road within Singapore itself. Now with the make line function, this is a bit messy. What I did was I made a line from our office to each point using the latitude and longitude from our data set. And you can see this is very busy here. Then using the distance function, where we specified the latitude and longitude to our office, we can then calculate the length in meters from our office to all of the clinics around Singapore. And so through a combination of the spatial functions available in Tableau, you can easily see how this becomes very, very powerful when we work with spatial data. So the first example I have for you is using that distance function and the results generated, I can put that as a filter to give me every single clinic under one kilometer from our office. And then I can plot on a map where from the office, I drew a straight line, which is a path, from my office to all of the clinics here and color coded by green, sorry, not green, blue to red in terms of the distance taken. So as you see here, the closest will be this clinic at 103 meters, and that is the clinic there. So again, I didn't do anything special. All I did was use three separate functions that came with Tableau out of the box. Now with 2020.1, what we could do is create a buffer around the office of one kilometer and see how many clinics fall within the buffer. Here, what I did is firstly create a buffer and by using the dual axis function, 
I plotted all of the hospitals as two maps overlaying each other, as you can tell from the columns and rows we have here. So with this buffer, we can change the distance as well. And with the filter of the distance calculation, I can now create an experience where I can drag the slider and show all of the hospitals within a 4.5 kilometer or 4,500 meter radius from our office. Previously, this would have been really hard to do outside of Tableau. And so potentially this can apply to a whole variety of use cases, whether it's in strategy and planning or using um, data to understand if you want to open up a new store, a new ATM location or a new service center in a certain location, you pair that with your membership or client or customer data, how many touch points would this new location have on your existing member base? And then you can use this buffer distance to calculate how many people will actually fall within that certain radius. And again, with parameters, this gets really interesting where if you were to publish this worksheet or workbook onto Tableau server, you can have your users enter a latitude. Let's just choose this one. Um, and enter longitude and play with the buffer distance to see how many customers or how many clinics in this example fall within a 4.4 kilometer radius within this latitude. So here I chose Cheney Airport, but this can cater to a whole bunch of things as long as you have the data for it. Now, finally, one last thing, and this is pairing all of the things I described just then in this demo with actions for potentially competitor analysis. If I was a hospital clinic and I wanted to understand from my individual clinic, how many other clinics there are within a certain radius, I can use actions to change the latitude and longitude of the calculated field that I have and then draw a buffer around it. So if, for example, if you had all of the customer data within your database and existing service center locations or ATM branches or stores, what you could do is look at, okay, where are these areas where I am not being able to serve my customer or effectively serve my customer? And so again, spatial analysis, it's just four functions within Tableau and you can easily create this yourself. One last topic on the spatial functions within Tableau. As you see from this visualization here, which I copied into the PowerPoint presentation, by using the make line function, sometimes the lines are curved. Here we have flights out from America to all of the other countries. And so when we use the make lines function in Tableau, Tableau will create a spatial line which accounts for the curvature of the earth in a three-dimensional sense as opposed to straight lines. And so this is very, very useful for, for when you're trying to create flight path. So excuse me. It's very useful for when you're trying to create flight path use cases, but at a local level between point to point, as we have shown here, it will still be quite a straight line. And that brings us to the end of the spatial functions demo. With 2020.1, Tableau enhances the existing spatial capabilities of Tablet Desktop. And these, again, are out of the box functions that you can use today, right now, if you had the latest version in Tableau. Um, one other thing to note is along with the updates, Tableau also offers the ability for users to quickly create a transient buffer themselves. So here we've specified one kilometer radius in our calculations, but you can also test it by using the radial selection tool on Tableau itself. So there's 
one level, which is super easy on a map, select the circle here. And you can see what is the radius. To code it within Tableau, you will need the calculator field paired with the buffer function, which I showed in the demo earlier. Now, as a Tableau challenge, do have a go at creating a dynamic buffer yourself. A really great example exists in this Tableau blog, blog where they mapped the location of schools against stores which had liquor licenses, and they used a variety of spatial functions and intersection of spatial fields from two separate tables to really create a detailed spatial analysis all within Tableau itself. Now, the last feature of today's demo is metrics from version 2020.2. I think, I personally think this is quite an important update and it can be very important for all of us as Tableau developers for creating easy, glanceable metrics for either business users that need data on the go or business users who do not have time to go through all of the dashboards themselves. So in my experience, we've, I've had a lot of requests to create mobile views for users. And personally, it is a very challenging and time consuming activity. Firstly, you have to think about how much real estate do I have to work with? Going from a monitor to a mobile phone is a big reduction in space. And so a lot of elements that you can show on a dashboard on desktop will not be used so useful on a mobile device itself. And then you also have to cater to a variety of different mobile sizes, either using Android, a really big Android, or either using a small iPhone. And finally, filters and interactivity is a pain. As you can see in this screenshot here, the filters are so small. And if you were to do actions on top of your visualization, it will just go all over the place because the thumbs will just accidentally click something. Now with 2020.2, we can create an instantly up-to-date metric view for any measure within a project. And the great thing is that they will all appear in a consistent format on your user's device. So a glanceable view is created without the need to access individual dashboards. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my mobile to show on this webinar, so I thought to include a whole bunch of images to really showcase the experience of metrics on mobile. So firstly, this is through the Tableau mobile app. And what I did was I created a metric. Here it's furniture sales, um, as you can see on the very first screenshot. And metrics will live within projects. So what you can do is create a whole bunch of dashboards and then create metrics for each of the key KPIs within your dashboard. And as a user opens up the project itself or go through on Tableau Mobile, the metrics will act just like workbooks and show on the page here. Now the thumbnail will always contain the latest data, a comparison percentage if you set it, and the last refresh time. The last refresh time is synced to where your data source is updated, so the user via the metric will always get the latest data available. Once a user clicks into the metric via the mobile device, what they see is the second screen available here. So here we see that it's the sales for furniture in a profitable category, and it has went up by 63.89% according to the calculation from March to February 2018. And you can also go through each data point available here and see what the metric was in June 2017 or December 2017, et cetera, et cetera. By clicking the adjust and compare option, we can select the date range for this trend line. We can figure out, we can select which comparison value to use, whether it's previous month or for the same month in previous year. And if we toggle on this show comparison line, you'll see the trace of one month or the previous month available in the metric itself as well. And the key thing to know is that all of this is out of the box with Tableau Mobile. There's no need to create year-on-year -year calculations or other calculator fields or dual axes for the lines shown here. All of this is enabled with Tableau Mobile once you have a metric selected. And to author a metric, all you have to do is go to your workbook on Tableau Online or Tableau Server, click the metric button there, 
and put in a name, description, the measure, and also the date dimension. So key thing to note, explorers and creators can create metrics on any mark, as long as um, the permissions are set up properly. Metrics are grouped into projects and they are accessed as you would with a dashboard. And then what you can do is for users that need data on the go, they can favorite their specific metric and through the mobile app, all they have to do is click on favorite and they can see the key, 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 the key KPIs, apologies, the key KPIs that they need for their everyday usage. So like I said, metrics are optimized for Tableau mobile, but that doesn't mean it's not available on Tableau server via browser. So on the browser, what you see is metrics like this in a grid view. And even on list view, you'll still be able to see the latest data available here. So once a metric is created, it will live within a project. You can either put the metric with the project in which they are part of, or create individual projects for your very senior stakeholders who need data on the go. And you can manage metrics similar to how you manage workbooks. You can rename them, move them, tag them, delete them, or even set permissions on them. And as a rule of thumb, I wouldn't recommend you to go out and make a whole bunch of metrics on your default project today. It will get confusing to the user. So think about what do you want the personalized experience to be? Do you want it to be that anyone coming to your project will see the high level metrics, or do you want to create a specific tailored mobile view for the key stakeholders who are important to your organization? Then you can think about the project structure and then how the metrics will live in each of the projects. So quick summary, metrics are available for Tableau Server in Tableau Online from 2020.2. It will automatically refresh and the metric will show for both historical records as well as the latest data available when it's connected to the workbook, which is then connected to the data source that's being refreshed by Tableau. Metrics are mobile optimized by the Tableau mobile app where you get comparison trends and year-on-year -year calculations without the need for formulas. However, on browser, all you get is the data point itself. And finally, explorers and creators can create metrics based on any mark from any dashboard, and these can then be favorited by consumers who need data on the go. And these are two of the resources that could help you in creating, typo there, sorry, creating and troubleshooting metrics or setting up metrics as the Tableau server admin. So I'm just quite conscious of time with 10 minutes to go. I'll quickly run through the features recap. We've went through the viz animations available with 2020.1. We went through the spatial analysis available from 2019.2 to 2020.1. And finally, metrics available with 2020.2. There are a whole range of use cases available for all three of the features. And I highly suggest either coming back to this webinar at a later stage once we send you the link to review those or find resources online from Tableau, which go into much more detail about each of the features. Now, the last part of today's webinar will be focused on showcasing one of our consultants, Saka. So Saka started her Tableau journey around two years ago, and that's when she found her passion for data and analytics. From then, she went on to create multiple visually appealing dashboards on topics such as sustainability, human rights, and pop culture. I thought to showcase her Tableau public profile in this webinar, as a lot of thought had went into, into these visualizations and they utilized some interesting techniques for insights from publicly available data. As you can see here, talking about the sustainability topic on a comparison between the number of vehicles, the number of electric vehicles and bicycles for each of the, if each of the countries listed here and the renewable energy sources for each of the country and where they come from. And finally, carbon emissions. So with countries that have high percentage of bicycle usage, are they increasing or decreasing on their carbon emissions? And another one, which is LGBTQ plus rights all over the world, utilizing some interesting techniques such as hexabins to create this very visually appealing and also informative visualization. And so, so Saka has her own blog available here where she goes through her journey using Tableau, using Alteryx, using Python 
to achieve some of the analysis she was able to do. And her public profile is available here, where you can see a whole bunch of other interesting visualizations as well. Now with that, we have about seven minutes left, and that is all of the content we have prepared for you today in this webinar. I hope you found it useful and insightful, and you learned ways in which Tableau can help you and your organization lead through change. New features in 2020.1 and 2020.2 that can enhance your storytelling capabilities. And finally, really informative and visually appealing dashboards from Shaka in our Tableau dashboard showcase. So as diligence, we can assist with your data journey for any level of analytics maturity, whether it's getting started with Tableau or designing advanced analytics solutions to predictive analytics and data governance. Please do reach out to Vignesh or Lenka, and we'll be more than happy to speak with you about the things we can do for your organization. All of the workbooks showcased today is available from the diligence Tableau public link available here. And finally, for one, for all of the Tableau developers on the call. One last call to action, which is also a really useful resource, is Tableau's e-learning program. They are offering 90 days of free e-learning for Tableau as long as you register today, by the end of today, the 30th of June. So for all of you who are looking to upskill your Tableau skills, do head over to the Tableau website and claim the free e-learning offer. Now I'll hand over to Vignesh to answer some of the questions you have for us in this webinar. Over to you, Vignesh. Thanks, Colin. Hi, folks. OK, um, I, I hope you've had a good session with Colin. He shared a lot of content. And uh, we'd now like to take some questions. I'm going to read out one of the questions right now from Amanda Lowe. Uh, the question reads, are all the features shown part of the standard Tableau desktop installation? Colin? Yeah, so all of the features shown today are available with standard Tableau desktop. And if you want the function to be available on server, it means you need to have a Tableau server or Tableau online license. So Tableau online is the hosted version from Tableau, whereas Tableau server is you hosting Tableau on your own servers and managing it by yourself. OK, great. Um, I think this same question was asked by, by Vanita as well, so Collins just answered that. Um, taking up a question from Priya Saini, is there any way to find actual distance between two points instead of the distance between latitude and longitude as the actual distance might be different? <laughs> that, that, that's an interesting question. Um, so I will play it back another way. If you had accurate latitude and longitude, then it will be quite accurate. Unfortunately for spatial analytics or spatial functions with Tableau right now, they only do latitude and longitude. So you won't be able to calculate distance based on custom maps because all of the maps are being plotted by Open Maps API. So you need latitude and longitude to calculate the distance. So that's kind of the limitations of the tool so far. But if you really look at the way Tableau is progressing with the updates from 2019.2 to make point, make line, distance, then buffer, we hopefully will be able to see more updates on this topic in the future. OK, so uh, just now you'd indicated that all these features are are available on the Tableau server as well. Um, how about the public edition? Is it available there? So as in Tableau public? Um, yep, correct. So these animations are not available in Tableau public, but you can have it on your Tableau server if you enable it by the Tableau admins. OK, got it. Um, I think we've, we've got two more questions. Um, I think similar to the earlier question from Priya, I work with a lot of geographic data like cities and suburbs, but no latitude mm -hmm. or longitude. Do you have any tips on how to get this data? I think this is about sourcing for information. So that's always a critical thing for developers. Yeah, so one of the quick tips, which I used as well, is um, Tableau, once you put in a geographic type of data, whether it's suburbs, whether it's states or countries, Tableau will generate the latitude and longitude for you. So one kind of like shortcut you can do is create the map within Tableau and then export the data out to be in CSV or Excel format. And then you can change your original data source to encapsulate both the latitude and longitude. All right. Um, one last question we've got over here. What types of users can create metrics and how do I enable this on my server? 
Yep. So explorers and creators on server will be able to create the metrics, but you have to make sure that the permissions of download full data, as well as embedded passwords to a data source are enabled. Only with those combination of license type, embedded password, and download full data permission can a user create metrics. And as an admin, if you didn't want anyone to create metrics, you can also di disable it on Tableau Server itself to reduce the confusion. Hopefully that helps. Great. I'm sure it would. Um, we've got one more question here from Peter. Are there going to be other webinars similar to this in the future? I think that's uh, something we're always trying to address, Colin. Yeah, um, so as of 2020.2, Relationships came out. It's a new way to look at how you can connect different data sources to try and bring meaning to your dashboard or to your wider data consumers in the organization. Um, based on the feedback of today's session, we may be able to provide news roundups every time Tableau comes out with a new feature. Because we do understand that as Tableau developers, you're busy day to day and you may not be able to keep up with the latest and greatest updates from Tableau. So as consultants, as diligence, we'll do the work for you and really help you digest all of the information in quick ways like this webinar going forward. So look out for another newsletter or an invite from us on another Tableau webinar in the future. That's great. Thank you so much, Colin. Um, I'm now going to share some closing remarks. Um, folks, thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. I hope you found Colin's presentation on the latest features from the Tableau 2020 release helpful. If any of the details that Colin has shared address any pain points you may be experiencing in your organization right now, we're happy to catch up with you after this webinar. Do watch out for our emails to schedule follow-up calls with us. Additionally, we will be sending you a recording of the session that we've just that, that we're just finishing up right now. If you have any questions that may not have been addressed, please do write to us. We'll respond as soon as we can. Thank you and stay safe.